Hey guys, welcome back to the motorcycle room. It's a new year and I have a new bike. It's this Husqvarna TE449 2011 that was converted to a supermoto by the previous owner or the previous, previous, previous owner. I'm not exactly sure who did it, but whoever did it took a stock uh, Enduro Husky, Husky 449 and they actually put the supermoto front end on it with the radial brake caliper, um, warp nine wheels, and this was actually set up as a street legal supermoto. I found it for really, really cheap. I think I paid $1,100 for it, and that's because it's in really rough shape. Um, it has the wrong exhaust on it, which I'll close in on that. Uh, it's super chewed up as far as the front end. It's missing the brake lever. So the guy who I bought it from was like, yeah, I'm basically just selling it just for the wheels. So he took it to a shop and they were like, oh, the linkage is on backwards and it's gonna cost you like three grand to get this back up and running. I don't know exactly how much it's gonna cost me. It's already cost me $500 in parts just for the brake lever and the new exhaust, which I don't even know if the new exhaust is going to fit. But it does run and it does drive. I haven't driven it much because it doesn't have a rear brake. And I don't really trust the whole bike too much. So today what I'm gonna be doing is reinstalling the rear brake pedal. I had to get that used from the UK and also installing a new aero exhaust onto the rear, which I also had to ship directly from Italy. No one makes aftermarket parts for it and the stock parts, some of them are unavailable and some are extremely expensive. The bike is obviously in very, very rough shape especially over here. I don't know if there was like a gas leak or it melted. It has this FMF titanium mega bomb um, header pipe, but then look at this cobbled together exhaust. Like someone just put this together. It's definitely not the right exhaust for the bike. It's uh, burning the frame. Hopefully it's not too weak from burning the frame, um, but it does have some nice goodies. It has the factory connection. Uh, suspension, it's got warp nines with decent tires on them. And the nicest part is that it actually, I think they did a su full supermoto conversion, so it has the radial master cylinder on the front. And this looks like the Husqvarna SMR449 front end. The rear brake pedal is a little bit strained. See, it hits up. Hopefully this isn't stripped down or anything. We've got no pressure here, so I guess we're going to have to bleed this. I can't say that that's surprising. Okay, now it's time to move on to the exhaust. I'll bleed this out later when I'm actually going to be able to ride, which is not for a while. We're removing some of these quality hose clamp holders. This is so heavy. I thought my new exhaust was heavy, but it's not. God, this is, oh. Maybe that's why I don't have rear brake. As you can see, rear brake just got fried. Brake line fried. So that's another expense I wasn't planning on. But hopefully. This is the aero exhaust that I bought directly from Italy. It's the only aftermarket exhaust that I can still find. So I'm hopeful, hopeful that it's gonna fit, but we'll see. So this part definitely fits as far as it lines up to all the holes. But the header pipe definitely doesn't. So I don't know if this header pipe is the wrong header pipe or if it's, um, because it's an FMF aftermarket, it doesn't work, but I can buy a stock header for this, and I think that will be, that'll be fine. So now I'm kind of at a crossroads. I think what I'm gonna do is keep this exhaust, and I'm gonna order a stock header, which they're only like 
I don't know, a hundred dollars so that I'll have a stock exhaust that's well set up for um, for Supermoto. I feel like this is a classic example of why you should not buy a rare limited production run bike because it's super hard to find parts for and then if you buy parts for it they might not fit so. Several days later. I'm back today. I thought it would be a lot warmer than it actually is. It probably looks pretty warm in the video, but it's like 35. Um, I just want to get this done so that it's done and I can move on to the other aspects of working on this supermoto. So I was able to get on eBay a used header pipe with like all the flanges and you know these things in really good shape for like $115. So that's another thing to add to the cost. I'm just going to pull off the old header pipe and I'm going to put this on and see how it works. So I've already removed these springs and then this one just pulls out. And then I got to remove those plates. Hopefully those don't give me too much trouble. So far, I don't have a 12 millimeter socket that's not an impact socket, so I had to use a 13 to finger tighten it and then a actual wrench to tighten it all the way. It seems like uh, seems like it fits better, and we'll see if it fits with the new exhaust. So I'm gonna throw that on. Maybe even start it up, but it's kind of cold. I don't know if it's gonna start. Battery's definitely like dead, dead. Now we can see if this exhaust actually fits. I think it will. Definitely fits. Okay, so I got the exhaust on. I think it already looks way better and I'm gonna start it up. Hopefully, we'll see if it starts. Um, see how it sounds. This has a little baffle in it that can be removed, but I'm gonna leave it in for now. Okay, so this is the first start with the new aero exhaust. Click like the battery set. So while I wait for the battery to charge, I've decided that I'm gonna take out the sound uh, baffle that this exhaust comes stock with. It has a really cool stock sound baffle and it attaches in like a pretty interesting way. So if you see this circlip and then sound baffle that attaches there, that's what I'm gonna pull out. And I think I should just be able to get some snap ring pliers pull that out and then this will be an unrestricted super loud exhaust. That's what you want on a race bike is a super loud exhaust. Maximum sound, maximum power. So I think my snap ring pliers are actually in my garage, which is kind of far away. We'll see if this works. It's now out. That should give us a pretty big horsepower gain and it's gonna be super loud, so very exciting. This 
is pretty much what I thought would happen when I bled it. The exhaust has burned a hole in the rear brake line and it's now leaking. See how that's wet right there? That was not wet before and I think so that just pushes fluid out right there. See? That's not safe. I charged up the battery a little bit and I'm gonna try to turn it on and check for leaks. So let's see. Very loud. That pretty much concludes this motorcycle room video. I was saying earlier, it's a challenge when you buy a rare Italian bike like this with hard to find parts. Another example of that is the brake lines. Galfer, which is a sponsor of mine, doesn't actually have them. So I'd have to make some custom ones with them or order from a different place. Again, it's only like $50 for a rear brake line. So it's not too bad, but these costs just keep adding up and adding up. This is only $1,100 and I've already spent five, $600 getting it to where it is now. And I know I'm gonna have to spend a lot more to get it fully sorted. So there's a saying, there's nothing more expensive than a cheap Mercedes. I think in this case, there's nothing more expensive than a cheap Husqvarna, which is actually a BMW, which is actually an MV Augusta.